So today it's been really good to have Miranda Christophers on the YouTube channel. She's going to be talking to us all about sex and relationships after becoming a new parent. So talking to Miranda today all about the challenges of becoming a new parent, how to keep your relationship communication strong and um, despite having a new baby when the two of you then becomes the three of you together. Um, Miranda is a relationship and sex expert and psychotherapist. She's based in Buckinghamshire in London and she is featured in lots of different media outlets as an expert on this. So you can find her on Radio 4 Women's Hour, Cosmopolitan, Huffington Post, amongst many others. And so it's been a real treat to have Miranda talking to us today on this topic for anyone who's thinking about starting a family, who is pregnant, or are new parents figuring out how to keep that relationship strong. So I initially found you on Instagram after sort of looking around for information and experts in the field of relationships and sex. And in particular today, I was thinking we could talk about becoming a new parent because um, I've got an 11 month old now and have found it quite mind blowing how much it changes sex, relationships and um, thought this may be a topic that other people are facing challenges with as well yeah definitely and yeah thanks for inviting me on but you know it really is such a topic I think for people and as you say children definitely change relationships there's no two ways about it and and certainly the sexual intimacy and just that sort of the general interaction between two people so yeah brilliant topic yeah because one of the things that um I think we've both said is that when you're pregnant, this is our first child, um, I'm sure it would be different. You'd know what to expect a little bit more second time round. But when it's your first, the, the emphasis when you're pregnant is very much on you know, the practical side of things. Like, have you bought this shopping list of items and are you prepared in that way? But I personally think that the idea of like talking about how much it's going to change your relationship and preparing emotionally and maybe having some conversations about that and communicating as a couple before the the baby bomb hits and suddenly you've got a newborn at home and it's just mm -hmm. you know it's hard to it's really hard to communicate with each other is what we've we've found yeah no it definitely is and I think as you say when you're going through that sort of preparation stage you're, you know you, you you're preparing for the sort of the physical presence of the baby um but you know we often don't think about actually how what the real impact of that's going to be and particularly you know we need to think about the idea that you're going from being um the two of you to suddenly three of you and actually that third person coming in is going to need way more attention um, than the two of you um, even put together so it's kind of like it does really um, change the dynamic of a relationship and obviously you know as lovely as babies are and you, you know <laughs> de definitely don't want to discourage anyone from having them because obviously it's you know it's wonderful to have them and have that family but at the same time it would be great if we were able to kind of um, think more about what that's going to look like in that preparation for the baby so we're thinking about things like you know how are we going to be communicating how are we going to be making time for each person to have that what they to be able to do what they need to do as an individual but also creating the space for them to still be able to kind of connect as a couple yeah, definitely. Because I think one of the things that we found is, well, there's, there's lots of angles to it. So there's the, the physical time of having together is, mm -hmm. you know, like you say, it's, it's much less. And so what one thing that we found is that it's very hard to have that, that build up to, um, you know, being intimate and being close, because often you are kind of condensing everything to like, right, we've got this amount of time or the baby's asleep how long will that last we don't know and um and so often the things that you rely on beforehand like you know having time to build up to feeling like you're in the mood to be close is um is much is much more challenging when when there's a baby in the mix as well yeah it, it definitely is I think um that is something that every parent is going to 
identify with. And I think, so it's that time, as you say, you know, you're losing what is potentially that, that build up, just that natural kind of bit more carefree time together or where are you able actually to focus in on each other more to suddenly sort of having to, to, to have much greater responsibility. Um, you may have had responsibility before, but this is a, this is a, a, a very significant responsibility, obviously when you're having the baby um, that you're, you're kind of, you're having to do one thing and then, you know, almost shift your mind and your mood to something else. Um, and when it comes to obviously sexual intimacy, you know, you do need to be relaxed, you do need to be comfortable, you do need to kind of not feel exhausted, um, you know, so there's quite a lot of um, sort of elements to it. So we do kind of need to think about like, how do we make the time to actually, um, you know, create the mood to, you know, have that build up. Um, and obviously, it, it, as long as you're mindful of it, it, it makes it actually a lot easier to start making it happen you know to sort of to think to yourself about okay let's think about our overall communication here let's not allow our time to be entirely consumed with you know work or children um or whatever else it may be and to think about you know do we do we set aside time specifically you know do we schedule it into the diary so we kind of know you know it could be that you know a certain evening you know that's going to be our time together without putting pressure to say right you have to do this at this particular time you can also you, you can kind of be going about it where you're saying look we'll just set this time aside so that we can spend some time together and if that develops into sexual intimacy then you know so be it but we won't sort of almost say right okay it's nine o'clock now baby's in bed you know let's get on it you know so it's it's trying to think about ways in which feel comfortable I think for a couple to be doing it I like what you said then about kind of not putting that huge pressure on but being intentional about the time mm -hmm. because I do think that that's really helpful if you have that conversation beforehand of saying you know let's set aside some time to be together but that doesn't mean that there's this huge pressure that it has to end up in. Um, one of the things that I find a lot of people talk about is this idea that it's all around like penetration and like that's how people think of sex rather than sexual intimacy, which may be that, you know, you, you it might not end up in that, but you're mm -hmm. still able to have time as a couple and that might be, like you know touch or other things that you're able to do because there's also the part which I know I felt and other mums feel is that kind of pressure that you can feel to once you've had that six to nine week check that all of a sudden it's sort of like right it's my it, you know it's, the pressure's on now to mm -hmm. to get back into having penetrative sex when maybe that doesn't feel right just yet or you know it feels it just feels like a lot of pressure I think for both the the, the mum and the dad sometimes yeah I, I think it definitely can and I, again I think that's something that so many um, people are going to identify with um, and I think you know what you said there is absolutely right it's kind of looking at it as uh, let's have let's set time aside you know to spend together to be close to have intimacy um, in one way or another it doesn't need to be sexual intimacy but you know it could be you know if you're tired it could just be about kind of having a, a bubble bath together or um, you know sitting and just kind of get getting cozy doing something together talking watching a movie um, playing a game or or it could be that actually you know you decide you know we do want it to be a bit more intimate let's let's just say you know have a have a bath have a shower together um, you know kind of get naked and see how we feel uh let's want to you know give each other a massage something like that but I think it's really important in terms of taking the pressure off because there's nothing worse when it comes to sexual intimacy than pressure I mean it's supposed to be about pleasure not pressure so so we've really got to get into that kind of mindset of like actually what do I want to do what do I want to do what do you want to do you know let's see if we can kind of if this is 
it's aligning and if it's not let's think okay what what other things would you like to do um you know so the, the, the focus isn't always on the penetrative sex because it's you know so much you can be doing so much you can be exploring that actually really is connecting to people feeling really pleasurable um and you know it, it just uh, all over you know feels good is is something then that you do feel um, is enhancing your relationship and fulfilling something within yourself. So I think it's really kind of tuning in with that and saying, look, what is it that we could be doing? Let's get some ideas together. Um, you know, maybe maybe have a chat, sort of come up with sort of five ideas of things that you might like to do um, each. And then you've kind of got almost got 10 things there to say, OK, you know, we like the sound of these perhaps between us or perhaps there's a few that one partner doesn't like, you know, so you can knock them off. But then actually you've kind of created a little pot of ideas of ways you could be having uh, intimacy and feeling like you're actually close, um, enjoying yourselves, but without the pressure. So I think I, I can't ever reiterate enough to people, let's take away the pressure as much as we can when it comes to um, sexual intimacy, because it's it, it just doesn't align with, um, you know, enjoyable sexual experiences. No, definitely not. And I think as a new parent, you already feel a lot of pressure, like you say, from the responsibility and so many other things have changed in your life that sex and intimacy with your partner should not be just another stick to beat yourself with and think oh you know I'm not doing it as much as such a body or I should be doing this more or I think that it can easily become a real burden on couples and, mm -hmm. and I think that's that's something where we we talked about because what we were finding was like at night time by the time we'd sat down and done everything like we were really struggling because we were just so tired and um, for quite a long time so we came up with the idea we thought well at a weekend when we've got more free time sometimes um if our baby has a nap in the day it's like well what can we do in that time where we feel a bit more energized and and, and less tired at the end of the day and that's worked for us that's just that's just an idea that's something that has helped us and um, to not feel so restricted to this idea that oh it must be like at nine o'clock at night and sometimes all you want to do is go to sleep at nine o'clock at night and it, it can be just rethinking it and having a bit more imagination about it definitely and that sounds good and, and you know from what you're saying that's really that's something that you've seen the benefit of it's working for you so I think that that's something that like we all have to remember like when we're doing this there's, there's not one like prescribed way of doing things you know it's not a case of you know, one size fits all. So, you know, we are individuals, we've got to work out what works for us, what works for our relationships. And um, yeah, and I think not be, not feel um, pressured by what other people are doing, because while something may work, you know, a particular time, particular day, particular way may work for one couple, it just won't necessarily for another. Yeah, and, and I think one of the things that's been good for us as a as a couple personally has been that you know we'd done quite a lot of work before we had our little girl around not letting things fester and building up you know like mind reading and thinking they're probably thinking this but but then then resentments can build up because you're not actually communicating how you feel so mm -hmm. we, we try and check in you know like if it's been a little while say a week has gone by and it's been quite a full-on week and you know, things just haven't panned out and there's been lots of nightmarish sleep nights and things, you know, we'll check in with each other and say, oh, it's been a rough week this week, but, you know, I just want you to know I've not forgotten about us and what could we potentially do to look at next week? Could we, you know, get someone to come around for a couple of hours and we could go out and do something, which is what we've been talking about this week, because, you know, we've kind of been flagging up that we need those times we say like every, at least every month, we want to be able to just go out for a few hours, have a meal, something where we can be, you know, the more like the us before we became parents. And I think that can sometimes get lost trying to work out this new identity that you've, that you've both suddenly got is hard. 
Mm, definitely is. And I think it's um it's so important to remember that you don't lose the identity as to you know who you were pre-baby. You know, you're still that person. You've just almost got this this extended part of you now that you know takes on the role of um parent and and partner in parenting. So so I suppose actually and maybe that's what it is it's you know in some ways it's recognizing that there's actually two parts to it you know you haven't just become parent to this baby you've actually become a partner in parenting so it um you know it's kind of recognizing that yes that changes the dynamic of your relationship with your partner because how you're going to start managing things may be differently to, to how you did before you had the baby um you know and the kind of the kind of conversations you're going to have are going to be different because they're going to be, you know, might be a, um, a situation where you're trying to find a solution to it and you might have different ideas on that. So, um, you know, there's a potential there for, for conflict to arise. So it's kind of thinking, you know, let's keep things open. Let's keep our communications open as we can um, and check in with each other it's just as you said I think you know that's such a great thing to be doing to kind of say like oh this is this is how I'm feeling and um you know I've had this particular week but I you know I, I still want to spend some time with you you know I recognize you've been doing this this week and it might just be at times you know if you notice your partner um has had a has had a difficult week is tired um it doesn't even have to be anything hugely eventful it's just checking in just saying oh you know um how are you feeling today how's this been or you know i noticed that you're looking a little tired are you okay how are you feeling about things um it's that communication i think that really goes a really long way because it's it's reminding both yourself and your partner that you know you're in this together like you know you care about them you want to show them that you still feel the same way as you did pre-baby at the same time you want to be ensuring that you're opening up so that they're not feeling that there's a uh, sort of almost a separation being created um by by the baby or by whatever's kind of come into the relationship so um i just think thinking around that is it can be really really helpful yeah, and, and I think if you don't do those things, that's when, well, I'm not saying that I never do this because I definitely have done, is um, when you're so tired and communication is just, sometimes it's not easy. Like It's not easy to keep things going with your partner and be open and have those difficult conversations and sometimes bringing up sex and, and intimacy can feel, it can make you feel vulnerable and um and when you're really tired and quite stressed it's easy to just think I can't go there right now and um, so one of the things that's that's really helped us is to try and yet yeah, not let that build up and also as well if I feel like I'm going there and I'm getting resentful and I'm getting angry is if we are going to try and talk about things is for me to own that and not be like you know you've not done this and you've made me feel like this I try and say oh you know own that vulnerability and say I feel so overwhelmed at the moment and I'm conscious that you know we haven't been close and and you know it's getting to me and I can feel all these feelings build building up in me because there are it never ends well when I let the resentment get the better of me and then I go into that mode of well, you've had more sleep than me. You didn't need to get off and do this. And then that becomes that, that tennis of going back and forth. And you, you know, when you're in it, you're like, why am I doing this? But when you're really tired, it's so easy to fall into. So I don't know if you've got any sort of tips on how to stop yourself going there. Yeah, no, definitely. I think, um, again, that's, that's something that I think we all identify with at times. And um, I think what's, what's important to just recognize is in those moments we're, we're quite emotionally uh, driven so um you are more likely to go to a place where you may come across as sort of uh, critical or perhaps attacking and, and just as you were describing it you were using the different wording so when you were saying that you know i'm feeling really overwhelmed or you know i'm feeling um tired or this is how i'm feeling at the moment what's really helpful about that of course is that the other person can try 
and sort of almost put themselves in your shoes and it, it gives them the opportunity to be able to recognize and empathize with how you're feeling whereas of course if you've got the you um you're doing this you've made me feel like that and um the word you going on a lot in that way then what's happening is somebody feels under attack and what do you do when you're under attack you know you try and defend yourself you're more likely to sort of attack back because you're trying to uh, protect yourself which is sort of a natural thing to do so we've got to recognize that actually that that becomes a little bit redundant actually this is where conflict um occurs and and in truth people are less able to take on what is being said to them in that in that instance so you know if if actually really what you're trying to say is i'm feeling overwhelmed because i've got so much going on at the moment and um you know i'm finding it all all a bit much perhaps with a lack of sleep then by saying it like that the other person really can hear and get into it if they're if what they're hearing is you're getting sleep at the moment it's okay for you you're able to do this and that and the other then all they're feeling all that the messages that they're getting is you're being resentful towards me um you know you're not happy with me so they they miss actually what is probably the true message underneath it which is this is all getting a bit much for me and i probably need a bit of help um so i think it's really saying to yourself okay let's let's be aware be honest you know if you're feeling a certain way just be really try and describe the feeling that you're feeling as opposed to going to the place where you're potentially sort of um hitting out the other thing i think is really important to do is talk about it in at the times when you're not tired, at the times, um, you know, when things are all going okay. And I think this is this is something that a lot of us forget to do actually um, in our relationships. It's like everything comes out in, in an argument or everything kind of comes out in a moment where you've been triggered to some degree. It might not so be an argument, but you know, something, something is there, you discuss it there and then, or you bring it up there and then. Um, and I think what's actually often more helpful is to do it the other way around. You know, when things are normal, when things are calm, be having that check in and saying, um, you know, I've been, you know, I'm feeling I'm feeling good today, but I've been feeling, you know, that I'm feeling quite overwhelmed, actually, at the moment, because, again, you actually get to rather than be emotion entirely emotionally driven you can kind of you've got that chance to sort of um step back rationalize it and you can communicate that to your partner in a way where you have not both um you know feeling these other emotions and um having the other things that are going on at that particular time so i think it's keeping on the you know check in on it um you know ask each other how you're feeling each day you know how you're doing um how, how's your day been you know it's just again you know i keep going back to the word communication but it really is important um for this reason but bring up some of those things just when you're actually feeling okay if there's something that you've noticed that you'd like to do it differently you know say you know how about we just but, but do it when you're not sort of feeling exhausted and and um yeah emotionally driven yeah when the situation's last charged and then you like you say you get what you need out of it rather than just it all going downhill and, mm. and then it just doesn't it never ends well so um so yeah that's that's one where I feel like it's a constant work in progress but also as well what we do is if we have ended up in that tennis of you know just getting at each other we try and not let it go on as long. And um, I think that in a way is one of the things where being a parent and, and having to work together to, to look after a child or a baby is that you can't, you can't fester the same. Well, we don't anyway, like when we it's just the two of us, we could maybe have that time of being like, Oh, you know, I can go off for a bit and sulk or whatever. But I think because we have to do the parenting together, we, we tend to, have that moment of saying oh I'm sorry I snapped then I just went into I got really defensive and and we try and bring it bring it back and repair it as soon as we can afterwards because it's inevitable that those little moments are still going to crop up but it's just about maybe trying to acknowledge that it's coming from a lack of sleep or mm -hmm. really taking a step back and thinking you know we're really going through it at the moment we're not well I'm speaking from myself, like I've not had a full night's sleep for 
over a year. That's one time. <laughs> and um, and I really, really, I just have to honour that that is that is going to take a toll on me. It is. It is. It's going to be exhausting, you know. Yeah. yeah. So it's good, to, you know, talking about it, as you say, um, and also limiting, you know, not allowing things to kind of to to perhaps drag on to to try and deal with it there and then. And if you know, and if it has happened that there's been a disagreement or some kind of conflict, you know, again, it's um, it's better to sort of try and resolve it, you know, in a it's perhaps the next day, for example, or, or later on that evening, um, rather than allow it just to kind of fester and and be prolonged. Yeah, and, and that thing about communicating as well is, I think, I don't know what you feel about this, but trying to have that acknowledgement and appreciation for what your partner is doing right and what you're doing well together and not just thinking it, but saying it to each other, you know, acknowledging mm-hmm. like all the, the difficult challenges that you're going through and saying, you know, you're doing a great job at this and, oh, you know, it was really lovely seeing you doing this the other day and I think that just sometimes we think those things and I think it's a little bit cultural as well that we're in this country you know we're not as good sometimes at giving that positive praise to Mm -hmm. each other it's sort of seen as a bit I don't know I I just think say I've got some friends in America they're much more gushy and and willing to be really positive whereas I do think that if you can acknowledge and say when you see the other person doing something it it gives it can give each of you a real boost and then when you do come together and have that time to be closer those things have all been building up like in a bank you know Mm. dropping the pennies in through the week and then you feel like naturally you're just more able to relax you feel appreciated and and so it's definitely like that drip drip through the week when you do have a little bit of time together it can just make it so much easier that's just what I've found anyway no that's that's very true and it's it's kind of I suppose it it goes back to that idea of not just suddenly kind of almost having to switch into a different mode um Mm -hmm. at, at a particular time because that's the time that you've got together it's kind of it's actually feeling good about the relationship sort of right the way through and um and it reinforces the idea of you know you've got my back I've got yours we're a team you know we want we you know love each other want the best for each other want the best for our family so it's kind of as you say the words of encouragement we we do it with children you know so why not do it with partners um as you say it's it's perhaps some of these things that are different cultures um you know find it easier to do than others but if we think about it you know it happens with children it happens with work uh what why not with um partners and and at the end of the day everybody likes some words of affirmation so it's, it's going to make a big difference to so somebody's self-esteem but also even to the person who's giving the 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 words of affirmation whether it's a compliment um it's nice to give and it's nice to receive so yeah I think it's a good idea yeah and I think once you start doing it it it, you build momentum and it makes it easier to keep on doing it because you see the positive effects and it stops you from getting into that resentful you know you know argument tennis back and forth so yeah, that's that's definitely something that I think I think has helped us. One other thing that I wanted to ask you about was that obviously we've talked about couples and intimacy together. Now, um, one of the things that that I know has sort of been on my mind and I've thought about is the idea that you know, as a woman, if you've given birth to the child, you've gone through this huge physical. Um, shift all the way through pregnancy and then you suddenly you know literally the day after you give birth you've gone through that just amazing but very intense experience of the birth and then your body all of a sudden shifts like I was really amazed at how you know you have this huge bump and then it just sort of dis- it disappears but then it's all a bit you know your body's so different mm. and um if you're breastfeeding you know you feel differently about all of these 
sexual parts of your body suddenly feel different to how they did before. And, um, and I think that maybe like taking the time to not just focus on reconnecting with your partner, but maybe before you do that, it's like, it's important to spend some time trying to reconnect with yourself. Mm-hmm. That's, that was something that I found in my experience was before I could feel comfortable and, um, you know, being intimate again with my partner. It was like, I needed to work out, well, what's happened and, and, and how do I feel about myself? Because, you know, your, your identity, your sexual identity, and it almost feels to me like it's like a life force, that energy that you had inside you before you had a baby suddenly is different and, and you need to spend some time working out the changes and getting comfortable in yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And as I think, um, you know, what you said there is really important because, you know, your body has changed its function for, for a period of time when you've, um, you know, when you actually go through that process of having the baby and, um, and things do, you know, change, physically change, feel different, you know, obviously, uh, many people feel uh, that they they have areas of um, discomfort in their body after you know whether it's painful breasts <clears throat> through breastfeeding or whether it's um, changes around the um, vulval vagina area um, after having the baby um, and some of those obviously could be very temporary you know in the first sort of um weeks or months afterwards and some people are affected by them um, for a longer period of time and you know those those are just those intimate areas obviously it's different parts of the body um um, in terms of pelvis that also that may be affected so it's from the physical point of view we need to be kind of mindful of that that it may feel differently but also as you say also from psychological point of view you know how you've kind of been seeing yourself how you perceived yourself before and how you perceive yourself after. Um, so it, it, there is this period of uh, readjustment. And for some, actually, it might be quite a liberating um, uh, sort of time in terms of actually now, because, of course, in those last sort of few weeks or a couple of months of pregnancy, you're generally quite uncomfortable. Um, so actually it can be, you know, my, I've got my body back. I'm no longer having to share it quite in the same way that I was. Of course, you may be breastfeeding, so you still are to some degree. But I think, yeah, really understanding, you know, yourself and your, your body um, post-baby and just getting getting back into that idea of it's, that it's, it, it is... Um, it is you, it's an opportunity to think about your own sort of sexual pleasure, um, yourself as a sexual being, because you may not be seeing yourself as a sexual being um, at that time. So of course it can be difficult then if you're going into partnered intimacy and um, you're not feeling sort of fully present in it in that way. And it can of course affect confidence uh, and self-esteem. So I think really just giving yourself that time to reconnect with yourself understand your body understand what you like what you don't like um in terms of touch uh, and that's something that you can all do you, you can do you know completely yourself um in your own time just in, in noticing that and also doing things like mirror exercises again it might be some people find this really difficult um particularly after they've they've had a baby um to kind of look at themselves and to um really just sort of acknowledge and perhaps look at one way to go into it, I think is to sort of um, almost do stand in front of a mirror to kind of do a head to toe scan and almost just take take in the presence of yourself in the mirror. Um, notice the areas that you like about yourself. You know, try and move away from any, any criticism of yourself or, you know, focusing on an areas that you don't like because remind yourself that this isn't what other people look at. You know, whether you're your partner, um enjoys you enjoys uh, the intimacy with you and enjoys the way you look they 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 enjoy being with you so you know that nobody else is going to be looking at you critically in this way that you may look at yourself so I think to really step back from it and say you know let me let me let me really look at myself as I am now let me look at what I what I um what I like about what I appreciate about myself what this amazing body has done you know in producing the baby um and then of course you know we can do sort of the the mirror exercise you know handheld mirror exercise again it can be daunting for somebody after they've had a baby 
but equally can be quite um, empowering as well because sometimes people are fearing you know what's happened and uh, you know just the idea of that if they've not had a look that can almost set in some kind of anxiety so I think you know doing that and recognizing that yes you, you're going to look a little bit different um and but you're still the wonderful you that you are so you know really sort of uh, tapping into that and, and thinking about that before you're going into the sexual intimacy just so you feel a bit more comfortable and I go back to the same uh message that I kind of gave earlier in terms of remembering it's about your own pleasure you know remembering that it's not about kind of doing it for somebody else it's doing it because you want to be doing it yeah, and, and when you said then about using the mirror and sort of looking at yourself, like that was something that um <laughs> that I did. I used the hand mirror and was like, right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look and see how things, you know, what's the situation. And um, and I must admit, I felt I felt really much better afterwards because I thought, you know, I'm still me. And um, and I felt like what I what I had in my head, the story that I'd built up about um what it might you know because I had a vaginal birth like what it what it was going to look like and you know it was nowhere near what I'd built it up to be and sort of taking that time and you know I think I built up to it where I'd try and spend a little bit of time on my own each day where like you say I would look at how I was feeling about myself I'd have a bath and reconnect you know with with my own self and then um, looking and thinking you know what I can, you know I'm still the, the same it's just that you know I've gone through this transformation but it just will take some time for things to to get back to normal but reconnecting and looking at myself and getting comfortable then helped me to have the confidence to to be intimate with my partner because I think for me the thought of when you've pushed and I know lots of people have different kinds of births and I can imagine that brings with it, whether you've had a cesarean or you've had a vaginal birth, there's so many different things that can impact on that, that area. Um, but, you know, just, just feeling like look at, looking at it and then feeling like you've pushed the baby out and then the thought of having penetration and something going in again felt quite scary for me. So, I communicated that and said, you know, it's, it's never pushed a baby out of me before, even though it is a natural process. So having those baby steps towards and communicating if things felt too much, you know, I think that was really important for me to get back into the swing of things. Cause I have mm -hmm. heard some horror stories on, um, I'm in a couple of groups from some hypnobirthing that I did when I was pregnant mm -hmm and mums connect after they've had their babies and there was quite a few it wasn't just isolated you know women saying that their partners were putting pressure on them to start having sex again and that they were kind of doing it in a way where it felt like they were definitely being put under pressure and that made me feel really sad and I know lots of the comments underneath were saying you know that's not that's not okay and you need to take it at your own pace but I really felt for those women because I thought that's going to really, I'd imagine, affect their confidence in the opposite way and make them less likely to want to want to connect with their partners again. Absolutely. And it goes back to that idea that actually where there's pressure, um, you know, it does interfere with with people's ability to have um, pleasure and as, as you mentioned there also confidence um, because there's not enough you know if you're feeling pressure to do something um, then you you're, you're being led by that rather than being led by your own desire to want to do it but also there's there's less time to give yourself um, really in terms of building up confidence and uh, fe feeling empowered feeling liberated you know these are all quite important elements that we need to consider so yeah I think I think it's important to be able to talk about that to be able to talk about that to a partner mm -hmm. um, and and there may be compromises you know there may be forms of intimacy that you can have that you feel okay with 
um, or that you'd like to do. Obviously, ideally, we want people to definitely just be doing things because they like them. You know, it's not good for people to be doing something that they don't want to be doing. It's it, it, it's it, it's harmful to the individual, as we know, but it's also harmful to the relationship in itself. So I think it's really important to be able to have that conversation and to maybe, I mean, maybe one of the ways to go into it is, is perhaps to explain um, that, you know, so if somebody's feeling that, that they're not ready, they're not feeling confident in themselves, really to just kind of explain perhaps why, so the partner can, can understand that. And then, you know, maybe for them to think ahead of time, think about, you know, are there ways that we can be intimate that I feel uh, are comfortable with, that I would like to, um, you know, so it could be thinking about that, thinking about the kind of things you'd like to do together and making those suggestions. So it doesn't need to be, and I think when people are under pressure, one of the immediate things to do is almost just kind of withdraw right I don't want to do anything nothing at all um of course it's a natural reaction when you you know when it's you your guard is up you're trying to sort of almost instinctively say that nope stay away um but actually if if you can kind of perhaps you know have an open mind to it in the sense of say to yourself okay let me just um sit have a, have a moment to think about actually would I like some form of intimacy that could be massaging each other, you know, or it could be, it could be um, doing something for your partner and saying, you know, if you're not ready to be touched intimately, it could be saying that I'm, I don't, I don't feel ready for that, but I'd, I'd enjoy to do something for you. You know, so it's about thinking about actually what, what do you feel comfortable with? What would you like to do? And um, you know, rather than allowing uh, that sort of that fear to be sort of consuming so I think to think around it again it does come back to the need to talk to partners though so that they understand where things are coming from and why they're there because actually if your partner knows about it if you've if you've got a supportive partner it's fantastic because actually they can start to help you a little bit you know they can say look what you know why don't you have a look at look at your body in the mirror or they can offer those you know those words of affirmation that we were talking about earlier that are going to help perhaps to enable you to see yourself and your body in a different way um, and if you don't feel that you've got a supportive partner I think that that's a conversation in itself to try and get them to understand why this is so important to you and why it would actually have a negative effect um, on both of you and what well, the relationship as well if um, you know if if somebody's feeling under pressure for sexual intimacy and, and, and they're not ready for it. Yeah, and, and what you said there about not being pushed into something that you don't feel comfortable with is um, is really important because I remember hearing there was a lady, she was on Woman's Hour and um, the relationship expert, Esther Perel, she did this mm -hmm. special and I remember there was a lady on that and it always stuck with me that even if her husband just tried to, she'd had a child and it, this was years afterwards, she just could not be intimate she'd had a traumatic birth and just the mate you know him rubbing her arm would just set her off and she couldn't she couldn't let him in which was obviously really difficult for the relationship mm -hmm. and and I think that you know Esther replied and said you know trying to sort of go through what what trauma has happened to you and understand that you know you are still a sexual being and mm -hmm you know, even if it's just that you need to get comfortable with touching yourself again and explaining to your partner why you find it so difficult. And then, you know, the lady seemed like that had really helped her because she she hadn't really been able to explain to her husband why it was, you know, mm -hmm. it just got to the point where he just felt really rejected and she wasn't communicating why. So, so I think mm -hmm. that finding... I mean, that's an extreme example where you can't even be touched, but the whole experience can make you feel um, that quote touched out, that phrase that people use. Mm. Uh, you know, sometimes if you've had a baby on you all day and they've been mauling you and then your partner is coming over and touching you, sometimes you just think, I just need a time out. Mm -hmm. and that's also okay to recognize that, yeah, there's, there's times where you want to be intimate, but that that is a real thing that I, I know I've experienced where you just feel touched out and you don't want yeah. anyone in your space mm -hmm. absolutely yeah so you know and I think another thing that kind of uh, links into that is sometimes that um 
you know, people will feel that, um, and perhaps re also re referencing what you were saying there um, about the lady that was talking to Esther Perel, that um, people can, if they're if they're fearing intimacy or they're not ready for it, they can start to kind of fear any kind of intimacy. So the partner coming over for a hug or wanting to kiss, um, there's a danger there that if it's if you're not kind of um, trying to sort of work through it, that actually it can get to the point where you don't want your partner to hug you. You don't want your partner to kiss you. You don't want your partner to touch you because you're so worried as to where it might progress to. So kind of doing, you know, again, going back to the openness, but doing things in stages and, and, and you know, being able to say, look, we can, we can kiss and it doesn't need to go further, but um, it is helpful to kind of do that rather than to allow it to build up to a point of, actually i just don't want you to touch me at all because i'm so scared of, of where this is actually going to go mm. so you know being open about it sort of sharing with your partner what what you feel comfortable with at any stage what you don't feel comfortable with maybe even just expressing that to them i think that's something i see a lot in couples therapy that makes such a difference when somebody's kind of being uh, withdrawing a lot because of uh, penetrative sex for example and the partner actually finds out that it's not that they don't want to kiss them it's not that they don't want to be hugged by them or be close to them it's just that they're fearing the penetrative sex that can be such an icebreaker for the relationship and, and helpful for both so i think you know being open about these things is, is quite important and doing it in stages as to how you feel comfortable um it is a great way to approach it as well yeah and it all it all really comes back to what we we've been talking about the whole way through which is that that communication and and i think that's going right back to what we were saying at the start is if you can, if say, if you were listening to this now and you're pregnant or you're thinking about starting a family, you know, these are all really great things to be talking about, you know, before baby arrives is recognizing that these challenges are going to come up and that, you know, how are we going to deal with that? And, and just even acknowledging that you're going to have these challenges can take the weight off. And so, when things do get really difficult, you think, oh, we just we did talk about that. It was probably going to be really tough for, you know, you know, up until like the whole of the first year, it, it, all babies are different. But, you know, I guess each year brings with it its different challenges, because I know people that have got toddlers and say, you know, oh, it was easier when they were newborns. But, you know, just just to acknowledge that it is going to shift things and have that conversation because like I say, I think it can be too much of a tick list about, oh, we're going to get, you know, this crib and we're going to have this play thing for the kid and toys and clothes. And it's like, yeah, obviously those practical things need to be sorted out, but you've got to have some emotional preparation. Otherwise, I think a lot of people, it seems like it just hits them like a ton of bricks. And then if they've not got that good communication beforehand, it seems like that's when it can really slip into a place of, you know, where it becomes really difficult because you can't even talk and the communication's poor. And then I guess that's when you may need somebody else to, to help you, like couples therapy. And I guess the good thing about all of the lockdowns and everything is that it's easier for new parents to access couples therapy because they could do it from home on Zoom. If mm -hmm. they can't get the babysitter to go, and do it somewhere I think that's that can be a positive yeah no it, it definitely can and um and I think and talk you know going back to what you were saying there in terms of preparing before you have the baby really talking about what you want you know how you want that to look you know there's a danger when with all the excitement of a new baby we go into sort of the practical you know the the ordering all the bits that we need and we go into the kind of you know the planning of that and and to some degree um you know and many people kind of i suppose uh, you know dare i say romanticize you know what that's going to look like to the relationship and it and it is wonderful and i, I think it's important that people you know remember that it, it, you know a baby a child into the relationship is it is fantastic but at the same time if we can have that preparation in terms of like what are your hopes what are your expectations what are your values these might you might have um, strong values or, or thoughts on things um, that only actually 
start to appear once you guys have got the baby um you know so it's actually kind of having some of these conversations ahead of time um that will really be really helpful you know really, or that it could be as simple as you know what are your expectations in terms of you know who's going to be doing what with the baby you know or is it going to be very much both hands-on is it going to be that one's working you're going to be kind of like doing it as shifts taking on different roles and of course things may change as you go through but the thing is as simple as that it actually can be quite good to have that conversation as ahead of time because sometimes we just we just assume you know we're all probably guilty of it we just kind of think okay this is this is how it's going to look like oh I've seen it I've seen it you know with my friend that's what it looks like so it'll be just like that you know and it's not necessarily the case so I think you know there's much prep beforehand um and those conversations will really um, sort of really help for when you do actually have the baby yeah I think films have got a lot to answer about you know this image that they create of what it's going to be like where we joked that it's always this beautiful nursery and and mm. doing this with the baby and they place the baby down like it's just going to stay in its own room all night and and just lay there and then they go out or go down and have a lovely evening and a, a good night's sleep and it, it does it does affect you because I think there's not enough honesty about it's going to be messy and you know you have to kind of embrace that and also as well like you said about working out well what are our values and once you have a child together you're no longer like a sovereign person if that makes sense that you've you know you've got this shared little person that you're both going to have different views on how to parent and you know how all that works so having that discussion beforehand of what do we think we want to do who's going to take on nappy duties if mum is breastfeeding um, mm -hmm. and then you know you just feel like you've both got things where you feel useful and you can support each other and that's something that we really didn't do enough of I don't think and I think if we had another child that would be a lot of the time beforehand would be preparing for you know, well, what's it going to be like? What might come up? Talking to other people that have had um, children, what was most helpful to them? What did they find most difficult? Just mm. trying to to work it out, I think, is 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 really important. Yeah, no, it is, and I think, and um, as well, you know, it's if if you're struggling, it's get it's to reach out for help. You know, there's going to be family, friends. If you don't have family and friends that can help out, you know, reach out, access who you can, whether it's, you know, in those earlier days through the midwife, through the health visitors, the surgery, counselling. You know, there's people out there that can can help and um, advise. And um, yeah, I think I think it's making sure that you're getting that, you, you know, you are able to talk to people about it and you, you're keeping you're able to keep um although you're going to be tired although it of course it's going to be it's going to be days that are going to be trickier than others it's it, it's giving yourself the positive affirmation you know you're doing well and you do, you're doing a great job and how you look is good and all these things that can be really effective and I think every um you know mom of a young child will have these kind of sort of will we'll have negative thoughts or feelings at points in time and just um through tiredness if nothing else um or if baby's unwell or if just things aren't working out so I think it's really important to kind of to have your have somebody that you can talk to that might be beyond your partner you know is somebody else so that it's not just so intensely the two of you that it all stops there it's somebody else you can kind of reach out to but also your, your own self-talk you know being kind to yourself speaking to yourself as you might do a friend if a friend was talking you through it you know with with in terms of media and as you mentioned earlier in terms of you know films we see the media we see we often see these beautiful pictures of you know mums holding their very calm looking babies and um you know and it all looks really very nice and in the movies they wake up the next day and they're all beautifully put together even though as you say they're all the child set but we all know the reality is we, we don't feel that way you know when you actually have a baby and um you know it, it's reminding yourself that actually you know that everybody else goes through these things too and actually you, you are doing a great job you you are great as you are because I think 
at, at times people will measure themselves or a lot of the time in fact people will measure themselves against others and um and in truth you know other people are going to be going through very similar things maybe not at the same time but you're not alone in that so i think it's really important to give yourself that self-talk just to kind of remind yourself of these things um because that's quite powerful really in terms of that self-validation yeah and and that self-talk about thinking that you don't have to be perfect that you, know, you can be that good enough mom um, and mm. i'll put a link to below there's there's a book um about the good enough mom that you know you you're not going to be able to do everything perfectly but you know the baby is going to absolutely just love being with you and you're always going to be you know the the ultimate per- perfect person to them even if you are messing things up or you're tired or you know it's it's just giving yourself credit and and not putting too much again that word pressure pressure on yourself i think yeah absolutely yeah Oh, well, it's been it's been absolutely brilliant to get your your insights into kind of the part, part about communication that feels like what's really come through really strongly and just that idea of having fun with each other and taking that pressure off because I know this we've talked a lot about the issues that can come from having a baby but I also know that since we've had our, our child that you know you're flooded with oxytocin after you've had a baby you feel a lot of love you can feel really connected with your partner more so than ever and I've also felt all of those things as well so it can be a real yeah the the contrast of sometimes feeling like you've got so much love um as well as the difficult times so it's it's really Mm -hmm. is a um all of the feelings I think yeah yeah definitely and um, and Miranda, if anyone wants to find out more about um, your work and what you do, where are they best looking to, to find you? So you can find me via my website, which is um, um, mirandachristophers.co.uk. So that's a website um, in terms of the, uh, obviously I'm a psychotherapist, so I specifically work with uh, relationships um, and sexual issues and I work with both couples and individuals um, you'll also find me um, on my Instagram you'll find uh, media articles like I contribute to on there so that's um, Miranda Sex Therapist on Instagram and then also on jui.co.uk which is j-o-o-i which is a sexual wellness and pleasure website so it's got information there in terms of sexual lifestyles um, articles on there and then also products so there'll be um it's it's all very um in terms of how that that particular website is it's a great website because um there's nothing there that's kind of um sort of too in your face shall we say so it's 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 a really nice website you could be on it on a train is is the way that it's been designed (laughs) very much um products just focus on pleasure um terminology used on there is nothing that's going to make anyone feel too uncomfortable in any way so it's a really uh, very much a sex positive uh, website so definitely worth having a look at that as well yeah yeah I was on it yesterday and actually talking to the piece of getting comfortable with your own body again and and you know using toys and and different other things to bring in to maybe ease you back into that feeling of penetration or or mm-hmm. um or intimacy like there's loads of really great articles and and bits and products on there that I think people might find helpful so I'll link to all of that below as well perfect hi okay oh thank you so to you Ruth I think it's such a great topic yeah yeah thank you so much for all your insights and hopefully it'll help lots of people whether they're thinking about starting a family or pregnant or are on the other side of it now and working through all of these issues